Okay, so welcome to another EIT Checks In. Uh, today we have Patrick Prendergast. He is the Provost of, of Trinity College in Dublin. Welcome. Um, and then we also have Dora Palfi. She is the CEO and co-founder of Imagilabs. Uh, she's based in Stockholm. EIT Digital Master School graduate, uh, co-founder of Women at EIT, um, and also in general, very active in the EIT community. So um, I'm very excited to hear you. Uh, you both have an interesting conversation. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. Um, and good luck. Well, Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'll begin, ask Dora uh, a question. Um, like, could you tell me more about your innovation and how you started your company? and where you expect it to be in five years? Wow, heavy questions, <laughs> of course. So I was studying in the IT Digital Master's School and, and had a, a research project as part of the studies. And the whole focus was how could we create a product that would make coding more fun and appealing for teenage girls and, and hence actually impact the number of women in technology. And I was studying human computer interaction and design. So it was very much of a user-centered design research project. And that's how the idea came to create a tangible product um, that can be customized with coding straight from the phone. So I wanted to show you actually, this is the Imagi Charm. This is, our, this is our physical product, the Imagi Charm. I can switch it on, so now it wakes up. <clears throat> and what I did just now as preparation, I, I programmed, I, I wrote a little script, uh, a short script that I can run and um, show you that, for example, I could program a scrolling text to say EIT checks in. Uh, so the Imagine Charm, it's, it's a smart accessory that you can customize uh, by programming on the phone using Python as the main programming language. And in our app, users can share their coding projects, they can collaborate with each other, and they can keep learning um, through, through fun and play. And for the five-year question, well, the Imagine Charm is just our first product, and, and we focus very heavily on our community and on the software and, and the interaction. And in five years, uh, we imagine to have a series of, of different digital and physical experiences that engage uh, teenage girls and, and young women with technology. Um, and in five years, our plan is to have reached uh, around a million uh, teenage girls with, with our, our solution and, and funnel them into uh, the tech sector. Well, Dora, that, that's great and uh, great ambition. Uh, and you also uh, co-founded Women at EIT, and, and your startup empowers teenage girls to shape the future with technology. So how do you see the role of education and entrepreneurship empowering women more? Yeah, so oh, that's pretty much uh, the focus. It has been the focus of my professional life to, to empower and engage women with technology and entrepreneurship. Um, obviously, education plays a huge role in this uh, at every stage of, of our life. So with women and EIT, um, our plan has been to, to encourage women who are already somewhat involved with technology to actually take that uh, sort of leap of, or have that leap of faith and, and actually start their own, um, own company, uh, which I'm hoping I can serve as the example of. Um, and with Imagilabs, uh, the idea is to, to reach uh, girls and women at a younger age, because really I, I so passionately believe that technology is the future and so we need women and, and girls to be more actively involved in, in creating technologies and using technology to solve the problems of, of the future. So I think education uh, being more um, applicable and technology education to sort of other aspects of, of uh, our lives uh, could perhaps involve more uh, girls and women. And I'm expecting that by having more female uh, students in, in EIT and more women entrepreneurs, we will be creating more and more products that will also then involve more and more girls with technology. So I'm, I'm expecting a positive reinforcement cycle here. Right, brilliant. And uh, how do you think organizations like the EIT can do more? What can the EIT do to promote women entrepreneurship? Tough question. Um, Obviously, the EIT already does a lot to promote uh, women entrepreneurship and, and just the support that we got from women at EIT, uh, the support that we got with women at EIT from the beginning um, showed that the EIT engages a lot with this topic. 
Uh, and so I think what's exciting about the work being done at EIT, how we can bring together sort of top down and bottom up approaches. So I think this work has to come from both sides. Obviously, um, us students and, and, and young female entrepreneurs sort of promoting and pushing for, for <laughs> more of us to be in the field. And then um, the EIT as an organization, which has a really uh, big reach at scale, sort of coming uh, top down. So what I'm excited to see for the future is having these two like meet a little more. So the EIT encouraging more of the, the low level and, 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 and the, the local initiatives and us being able to scale the local initiatives to a higher level. I think that's where we could do a little more sort of like bridge, bridge that divide. Great. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the plan. Great. Excellent. Okay. I, I also have some questions <laughs> in Great. return. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so the question would be, how can universities like Trinity College Dublin uh, become more entrepreneurial and support innovation? And, and of course, how can organizations such as EIT help in this process? Well, Trinity College Dublin is an old university, but that's not the most important thing about it. We're 425 years old, but we really yeah. lead in innovation and entrepreneurship. So we already do a lot. We provide incubator spaces for students, which is very important. Not just PhD students, but undergraduate students who want to start their own companies. Uh, this is all part of what we see as a core mission of our university. It's how students uh, learn, it's how students uh, engage, it's how students can make an impact in society. Because you can create impacts in society by creating businesses that do things in the capitalist economy. We believe this is possible. We believe that uh, students can lead in this. So that's how we support innovation and organizations like the EIT help because they create networks and the particular great thing about the EIT is this concept of the knowledge triangle. Now, it's not universities on its own out here and business on its own out here and research is on its own out here. The three things form a triangle and they work together to deliver innovation and entrepreneurship for society. So that's the EIT's mission. Excellent. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. And I can personally relate as I, I started in that triangle with my own impact company. But then it's very interesting. How does this uh, strategic change towards innovation um, come in after such long old traditions of focusing more on research and, and teaching in universities? Well, universities have always been interested in changing society. So if you look back 50 years, this university, Trinity College Dublin, was responsible for a lot of social innovation, bringing things into, into Ireland like, um, well, like uh, uh, contraception, for example. This was banned in Irish society, but new ideas came into Ireland through uh, Trinity College Dublin and other universities. And more recently, our students led the challenge for marriage equality as another example. So these are social innovations, but they're not far away from entrepreneurial innovation. Same mindset, this desire to create change. So although we're an old university, uh, we do have a long tradition of innovation and change. Uh, and also entrepreneurship in a way, some of the top business people in, in Ireland and in the world are graduates of Trinity College Dublin. Michael O'Leary, for example, who, uh, who started Ryanair, which is now one of the world's biggest airlines. Now he wouldn't have been called an entrepreneur, it's just a business person. But now people see this is entrepreneurship as well. So we're an old university, like many in Europe, but we're very new in our minds. Amazing. <laughs> and you have to keep uh, being new and learning to, to stay competitive. So that makes Absolutely. sense. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and a bit of more about you personally. Uh, so what was your ambition um, for the EIT when you joined the EIT governing board and, and how does this ambition work out? Yeah, well, you know, when I joined the governing board, uh, I guess it was just interesting to be invited to, to join a European organization. But when I found out really the scale of the ambition, I mean, the EIT is doing something that's not being done anywhere else in the world, not in the US not in Asia, uh, creating these knowledge triangles in specific domains like urban mobility, like raw materials, like climate, and trying to uh, jumpstart whole new innovation ecosystems in a specific domain. So for me, that's what, the EI, that's what makes the EIT exciting. Like you can go around the world and you'll not find the same thing anywhere else. We in Europe are leading in the whole idea 
of creating innovation ecosystems by bringing universities, research centers, and business together. So, I mean, who wouldn't want to be part of that? Do I think we've achieved it? Absolutely. Uh, we're up, our reputation gets stronger every year for being able to deliver on these innovation ecosystems and help people like, like you and me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, my, my pleasure and uh, really enjoyed the talk. Thank you. <laughs>